What's it smell like? It smells salty. Nice salt air. I'd like to eat an oyster that embodied that smell. We left Block Island on July 4th with plans to head northeast to Cuddyhunk, Massachusetts, a small island at the western tip of Cape Cod. Unfortunately, the wind picked up and created some really uncomfortable and confused waves, which caused us to reevaluate our plan, and instead, we decided to head north into the Sakonet River. It was pretty exciting on the way over. We heard a lot of pom-poms and distress calls. There was uh, an airplane crash off of Narragansett in the water. There was... There was multiple boats that had, were adrift. There was that boat that had hit another boat. Yeah, there was a collision. There, there was a sailboat that was flipped over with people in the water. Yeah, there was the uh, uh, jet skis. Fire. Oh, the boat fire. There was a boat fire, yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all of them, we believe, well, I guess we don't know for certain at all, but we believe that all of them uh, turned out reasonably well. And then just as we came in here, there was the DSC? D what is oh, that yeah, called? there was a DSC call coming across that they were trying to contact the person that was up in Buzzards Bay. Um, so, I, you know, I mean, we didn't keep listening to that. Um, yeah, it's July 4th. <laughs> I should say that, too. There's a ton of people out in the water, and... Um, We spent the night at the mouth of the Sakonet River and enjoyed a beautiful sunset after dinner. We made plans to leave early the next morning to find a cheaper anchorage with better access to shore. We are heading up the Sakonet River right now. Uh, we left Little Compton, um, I don't know, about an hour ago. Uh, dropped our mooring and decided to head, it's about six miles up here to a place called Fogland Point. Um, and we're going to uh, anchor there. The mooring ball uh, at Little Compton was $30 a night and there's absolutely no services there. Uh, there's not even a public dock. Uh, so we are trying to get closer to a place where we can take some showers and do some laundry, do a little more provisioning, um, and most importantly, get a rental car so we can go and pick up uh, the part for our radar uh, that we're having fabricated so that we can mount the radar on our back today. It's a lighthouse there behind Jeff on that really cool rock ledge. We've got some pretty dark clouds overhead. You can see we're like right underneath them. But it's blue skies ahead and we should be there in about 20 minutes. Fogland offered us protection from either north or southerly winds, depending on which side of the spit we decided to anchor on. From here we had Enterprise pick us up so we could go to Fall River, Tiverton, New Bedford, and Newport by car. is uh, probably not the right term. We are doing our laundry and we had 28 minutes to spare, so we drove 12 minutes over here and we're here for four minutes before we turn around and go 12 minutes back. Gotta check out the algae. 
Yeah, we go check out the town, check out the Algin. So I bought this underwater film camera with some of my grant money from Bradley University and uh, to uh, work on a project about dinoflagellates. Uh, I'm not photographing dinoflagellates today, but I am experimenting with the camera just to make sure that I understand how uh, the film is going to work and how the camera is going to work underwater and you know all those sorts of things. Being not scared. Trying to be not scared. Hi. The next morning we headed into New Bedford to explore the museums and historic sites. We were pleasantly surprised to find that the Hukalea was in town and open for tours that day. The Hukalea is a Polynesian voyaging canoe that uses wayfinding techniques, including the sun, moon, stars, wave patterns, and animal behavior for navigation. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check out more about this amazing vessel. After our tour of the boat, we checked out the New Bedford Whaling Museum, which is dedicated to the history of the whaling industry in the New Bedford area. So we're floating around in this awesome sunset at our anchorage right now because we ran out of gas. And why did we run out of gas? And we ran out of gas because when we went to pack up the dinghy this morning to go to shore to run a bunch of errands and stuff. We noticed that we didn't have a gas can in the dinghy. We didn't see that last night because it was dark when we got back to the, the boat and uh, we just didn't take notice of it. And so this morning, Jeff asked me if it was aboard the boat when we were packing up and well, it was not there and so we realized what happened. So first thing this morning we went out and got a lock and we locked up the dinghy this morning when we went to New Bedford and we took all the life jackets and everything else that you're supposed to have in the boat out and put them in the rental car. And today nothing got stolen. Weeks in Baltimore, yeah. nothing was stolen. You know, I mean, I'm tying up to the dock. Uh, New York City, nothing was stolen. You know, one of the richest places probably in Rhode Island, I don't know if it's the richest place, but a wealthy place in Rhode Island within spitting distance of Newport and someone steals our gas can. It makes us now lock our dinghy everywhere we go, probably. Yep. Yep. It's a bummer. Yep. Yep. The next morning, we woke to another blanket of fog, so we took some time to work on mounting our new radar before heading over to Newport for the afternoon. In there is a delicious painkiller. Jeff has a dark and stormy. <laughs> We're hanging out at Diego's on the wharf in Newport today. Delicious. The following morning we returned the car, after fixing a flat, and picked up anchor to head further north, with plans to eventually make it to Bristol. However, sometimes best laid plans. So we just came in to, where is this? Standish Boat Basin. Standish Boat Basin Boat Yard to get a pump out and we ran into some other Tiana 37 owners. Uh, Isla Hope with David Duncan and his wife aboard hailed us and uh, we're gonna um, meet up and have some cocktails in a little bit.
coming into this pretty narrow uh, little river here. Um, we're following Isla Hope, which is the Tiana 37. Um, and uh, we're gonna go in there and anchor up. There's right to our right here uh, is a little shoal with about two feet of water or something like that at low. We're just about an hour after high tide, so we're not hoping we don't have any problems with depth. Um, Isla Hope is leading because they've been in here before. And this is off the port side. This is like every day on the boat. This, like, what this, are you this, doing this to is, me right this now? This is going to be edited, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. This will be edited for <laughs> <Cool>. quality assurance. <laughs> so, um, who are you guys? <laughs> uh, who are we? Well, Dave and Beth. Uh, we own Isla Hope here. We bought Isla Hope uh, Tyana 37 back in 2012. And, uh, 13. 13. And uh, hopes to four. hopes to plan, you know, sail down to the Bahamas and cruising in a couple of years. So, but uh, what kind of boat is Isla Hope? She's a, a Tiana 37, 1986. MK2. Yeah. Yes, the good kind. Yeah. <laughs> and where are you guys from? Uh, we live well, in. Well, we live in southern New Hampshire, southern New Hampshire right Hampshire. now. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to relocate down here to you know Rhode Island and and winter live aboard and stuff. But, uh, you know, we're in the, in, that's in the works, so hopefully, you know, a year or two that can yes. happen, or maybe we can just uh, a year or two head down to the Bahamas and, and start cruising a little bit. Cool. Yeah. How did you guys end up hanging out with the uh, crew of Return to Seasons? <laughs> We were well, at from, our... well, from following you guys over the past <laughs> two or three years and, yeah. and, and helping Jeff out on some problems uh, online and stuff, stuff yeah. yep. um, I was just I was loading fuel onto onto the boat and we I turned to look, I looked and... over and I said, that looks like a Tiana 37. And I'm like, that's Bear. I couldn't quite make out the name. And I'm like, holy crap, that's Bear. So got, Beth, Beth tried to turn on the radio. I'm like, <laughs> and I, I, I came, couldn't turn it on. <laughs> I, I came down like, and turned on the radio. Like, yeah, I nearly fell over because, yeah. I'm like, I literally just said, too, I think that's a Tiana over there. Yeah. <laughs> that's and, awesome. And the weird thing is I had a bear in my yard this morning, so it was Yeah, like, so we were, we were wondering yeah, if there's any correlation, correlation between, between the black the bear running through our yard this, this morning, morning with a cub, and then we see bear. Yeah. It was an omen. It was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next time on Return to Seasons. We hang what out in the Kikimuit, the Kiki for short, for a little while longer, visit with some family that are in the area, and then head over to Potter's Cove and Prudence Island to do a little exploring. <laughs>